flooded by the worries of our time. And when the time comes for us to receive this message that will transform our lives, the devil can shade it away from us. At this moment, thank God that he that has called you should take over everything that is going to happen for these nine days. Invite God into your heart to push off from you anything that will hinder you from participating actively in these nine days of agreement with him. Tell God that you are representing your family, you are representing your lineage, you are representing those that have asked you to pray for them, that on this first day, God shall come and possess you. Invite God into your hearts. Raise your hands. This is a time of meeting. A time that we begin. And we are not beginning alone. We are beginning with God. There is a reason for which God has called you. There is a reason for which you are not at any other place but in the temple of God. Tell God to make manifest the essence of our gathering today. God... Behold your children, who in obedience to the call for this nine days journey with you have come from their various families. If there is any evil inclinations, any force that have accompanied them to this presence of you, Lord, any force that has followed them to this point, just to distract them by the authority of your presence, we push it out of our reach in the mighty name of Jesus. Any spirits that have come to confront our union with God, any authority that is not taking authority from God, just to distract us by the authority in the presence of God in the blessed sacrament, we ask that this place will be comfortable, will be uncomfortable for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Any spirit that is not of God that has come to distract us, we agree that they be distracted. We set commotion in their kingdom that our gathering this evening and until the end of this gathering, there will be no peace in the kingdom of darkness to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. That the problem that they set out to infuse into the life of the children of God will be their testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. That while they are gathered, the Holy Spirit will distract them. And the peace that accompanies this gathering will reign in our lives. The peace will reign in our families. The peace will reign in our homes. That at the end of this gathering, for these nine days, any family that is encountering disunity, Unity shall be their testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. That any family that is encountering setback, that God is going to open doors for them. Doors of blessings, doors of prosperity, doors of restoration, doors of liberty. That God will not use our sins against us. That he will forgive us our sins and set us free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your eyes and do something wonderful to the Lord. Yes. Clap to the glory of God. Do not clap for me. Do not clap for your neighbor. Do not clap for any power that is not of God. Do not recognize any authority that is not of God. We are in the presence of God. And in his presence there is anointing. Anointing that breaks every yoke. As you put your hands to the glory of God, mountains will be removed for us to walk dry shore. Every sea that hinder us from walking into our greatness, God is going to open it for us. God is going to rain down our blessings. In the marvelous name of Jesus. Can you be seated? Amen. Today is the first day of our journey with the Lord as directed by God through the chief shepherd of the diocese of Port Harcourt. 
We had to journey with God for nine days. Nine complete days of constant union with God. And these nine days are going to be accompanied by God's blessings for us. The general theme for this nine days novena is, Thy kingdom come, O Lord. All say, Thy kingdom come, O Lord. Thy kingdom come, O Lord. This Lord we are talking about is not the Lord of our families like the head of our family. It is God that we are begging that his kingdom to come. If the kingdom of God be experienced by us, humanity, many things that we are seeing to be problems today will not be, will no longer be a problem. Because in the kingdom of God, there is freedom. In the kingdom of God, there is peace. In the kingdom of God, there is prosperity. In the kingdom of God, there is anointing. Anointing that we take away every sickness. Anointing that we take away everything that suppress us. That is the intention of the diocese for every member of this diocese. I mean you and myself. But for this to happen, the diocese have brought out different topics for different days. And on this first day, a question is asked. And the question is, where are you? Amen. What is the question? Where are you? This is seen in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. Journey with me into the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Can you read it with me? And, it's, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Amen. In other words, the question is, Where are you? Now, look at somebody that is seated by you. Do not rush this part. Ask the person, what is your name? Answer the person. Tell the person your name. Now, call that name and say, God says, where are you? What is your name? Mary Ann, God says, where are you? Amen. This question was addressed to who? Adam. The question was addressed to who? Adam. For us to understand this particular question better, we shall go straight into the book of Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2 from verses 15 to 17, it will clear the ground for us to understand why God is asking this question. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. The word of God says, Then the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden, to cultivate it and guard it. He told him, You may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, except the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. Hello? If you do, what will happen? You will die the same day. That was a command given by God. It was a command that of the trees in this garden, you must not eat it. You must eat all of them. But the one that will make you to know what is good from what is bad, you must not eat it. And any day you eat it, what will be the result? You shall die. But something happened. In that, we see the instruction given to God. God did not say, I am taking the willingness to do or not to do from Adam. He allowed him to be free. As you are now, God allows you to be what? To be free. If you are inclined to stealing and you have seen something you want to steal, your mind will be telling you, do not do it. So we say, do it. And you see yourself battling with whether to do it or not to do it. At that point, God is watching at you. But God wants you to know that you have that freedom. But your ability to detest, to resist that temptation at that point, is what 
proves how much you love God. That was what happened to Adam. And Adam was living. But then, this a place that God asked him to stay is a special place. It was a garden of what? Eden. We need to understand better what this garden is all about. The garden of Eden is otherwise is also called a terrestrial paradise. It was a place of joy. It was a place of happiness. It was a fruitful place. A place of what? Fruitfulness. A place that one will be pleasurable, one will be enjoying. God created Adam and Eve and placed them in that garden where there will be so much joy, so much things to enjoy. A greener pasture, a place that is well watered, a place that God planted and deems it fit that man should enjoy. That was where Adam was. And in that place of luxury, Adam was free to do or not to do. But then something happened. The instruction that God gave to him, there was a dent on it. And at the point when Adam decided to deviate from what God has asked him to do, God knew that Adam has fallen. If you read as fallen, if you read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1, you see that the general theme of that particular chapter is the fall of man. And in that fall of man, we see three important things. The fall, the temptation, and the judgment. In the first one, which is seen today, is within what can be seen as the fall of man. When man fails, when man disobeyed, Adam, who was asked to stay in a place that he will be enjoying himself, a place of fruitfulness was unable to stay there because he has disobeyed God and he ran away from where God asked him to stay. So much that when God asked him a question, there was a response. The emphasis today in our discussion is not about the fall of man, but the concern of God for humanity's fallen state, for salvific purpose. When Adam fails, God never abandoned him. God went in search of him. When he has deviated from the glory that God has bestowed on him, God never said because he has chosen the wrong path, I will leave him to be there. No. God went in search of what? Of him. Today, we are talking about the Adam. And in no distant time, we shall relate it to ourselves. And that is why from the beginning I asked you, Call the person by your side and you call the person. And he told you or she told you about the name that he or she is bearing. And you ask, where are you? God asked Adam, where are you? Let us look at the response of Adam. And then we look at it simultaneously to what our responses are. Because I do not know where you are. You may be seated here in the church and your mind may not be here. You may be seated here looking at Jesus and you are not having any good relationship with him. Your relationship with God determines your position. So that when God called Adam, Adam was not where he was asked to stay. You may not be where God wants you to be, but we shall know. And when we have realized where we are, then we know whether we are okay where we are. And if we are not okay, we move to where we should be. Let us look at the response of Adam to this pertinent question God asked. Genesis chapter 3, continue. But the Lord God, he answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. I was what? Naked. What question did God ask Adam? Where are you? What response is Adam given? I was naked. Does that answer the question of God? No. In that answer, you see confusion. God was asking of a place. And Adam is telling God, I am naked. Because of what? He has disobeyed. He has sinned against God. That is the repercussion or the resultant effect of sinfulness. When we commit sin against God, we become ashamed. And that was why Adam was ashamed because of what? He has offended God. There are things that we do that when we are called upon to come and testify, you see a big man that was always agile and manly. 
you see somebody fidgeting. You see somebody trying to hide his or her face. Because of what? Shame. Sin can make us to be ashamed. Sin can make us to be mad. Amen. Now, Adam was mad because of what? He was naked. And nakedness is associated to madness. Somebody who is psychologically imbalanced. Praise the Lord. When we commit sin, we are like mad people. Adam was mad. Adam was naked. And what did he do? He hid himself because he could not face God any longer. Where are you? Your relationship with God now, like the diocese has brought out for us to ask, is it something that if God should ask you, where are you, you can boldly say, I am here. Will you answer like Adam? Or you will tell God where you are? The question is, what is your relationship with God? Adam's relationship with God was faulty on account of disobedience. Are you doing what God expects of you? Are you in good relationship with God? Can you tell God, please do this for me because I am faithful to you? Are you faithful to God? Amen. The question is, where are you? Adam was hiding because he was ashamed. I wouldn't know where you are. God placed him in the garden of Eden, a garden of fruitfulness. It is taken for granted that at that point in time when Adam was hiding, he was no longer fruitful because he was no longer at the place God wanted him to be. If you are not in good relationship with God, you will not be fruitful. Adam was no longer fruitful because he has left the watered garden, the garden of fruitfulness, the paradise that God made him to be, the place that he was supposed to encounter joy and happiness. And he went and hid himself, discovering his emptiness and nakedness. Are you close to God as we speak? If you are not, you are not different from Adam. Adam was not. But then, he was not sorrowful. Praise the Lord. If Adam were to answer the question rightfully, he would have said, Lord, I have offended you. So that the question that is addressed to you today, if truly you are not where you should be, you should be able to own up to say, I am not where I should be. But then, if you move further, you see that there are answers that Adam continues to give. And those answers were given because he started wrongly. You know, when somebody lied at the first instance, you have asked somebody a question, and you know that the answer you are to give was supposed to be the rightful one, and you lied. If you lie from the beginning, and they continue to ask you, you see yourself answering line, 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 and you lie endlessly. But if you say the truth, even at gunpoint, your truth will remain what? Your truth. And you will not need any other truth to defend the truth. But lies needs more lies. When Adam was asked, where are you? He said, I am naked. And God continues to ask him. He said, have you eaten the fruit that I asked you not to eat? Then you see Adam bringing excuses. The woman you gave to me was the one who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Amen. Amen. Adam started louding excuses upon the woman. The woman that he was very happy with at the beginning of creation. Adam said, after looking at the woman, he was very much fulfilled and he said, you are Eve. You are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my word, flesh. Just as you started from the beginning of your marriages, you remember how you started. I mean the men basically in this discussion. Amen. You will hide and go and stand at a corner and be whispering, come to this place, you meet me. You will meet yourselves. Sometimes you go to different places. But at this moment that we are talking, the way you started then, are you still like that? 
Those of you that are with wives, can you see move happily with your hand with and your wife? You blocking your wife with your hand, you move on the road for people to see you like you were flashing out from the beginning. Can you still do that? Some of you are tired even from the beginning. And the, the, the truth remains that you see this marriage that you have entered, you are not going to anywhere. You will die there. Amen. You don't want to say amen. The death I mean is you will be in that, you are not separating. That is where you will remain. So you better go and look for the love that you had before and begin to sharpen it and use it. Now Adam said, the woman you gave to me, appearing as if he wasn't happy with the woman. A woman that he confirmed to be the flesh of his flesh and the bone of his bone. Because he has committed sin against God. He has started shifting blame onto the woman. And God faced the woman. What about you? Say snake, the serpent. Praise the Lord. The point that we have to draw from these excuses that Adam gave is that at moments that we know we have committed sin against God and humanity, there is need for us to say, God, I am sorry. That is what is needed for us to be back to God. That is what we need for us so that when we call on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, we be felt even in our families. We need to say, I am sorry, not from our lips, but from our hearts. And when we say we are sorry from our hearts, we will see ourselves working harder to repenting, to changing, metanoia, change of hearts, breaking our hearts and not our clothes, not tearing our clothes, but breaking our hearts. So in this period, these nine days, the diocese enjoins us to remember that we are sinners. For us to remember that probably where we are is not where we are supposed to be. In our businesses, we may not be moving forward. This is not because God has decided that we should not move forward. Perhaps because of our sinfulness. Perhaps because of human intimidation. Perhaps because of people that are marginalizing us. But when we are in good relationship with God, the marginalization of humanity cannot take precedent over the instruction of God for us. I pray for you today that if anyone, anywhere, has said that because you are close to God and the power that they have is going to pursue the power of God by the authority in the resurrection of Christ, I restore you back to your rightful positions. In the mighty name of Jesus. The children of God may encounter difficulties, but the difficulties will not be more than what you can bear if you remain faithful and focused. What do we need to do then? I am sorry. Where are you? Amen. Where are you as we speak? Some people are suffering greatly because of disobedience. God says, this is what you are to do. This is how you are going to persevere on account of the faith that you have in me. You have to remain firm in your faith conviction no matter what comes your way. No matter the difficulties, no matter the hardship, you need to endure and remain focused with me. But when we are advised on account of our difficulties we are encountering and we begin to deviate and think that we can have solace in any other God but the almighty God, then God will look at us. Amen. When Adam was eating the fruit, was God not seeing him? Praise the Lord. Was God not seeing him? And that leads us to the second aspect of this fall of man. I said the fall of man has three basic aspects. The fall, the temptation, and the judgment. The second aspect is temptation. Temptation is drawn from the Latin word temptare, which means to test. To do what? To test. You have, many of you have gone to school and you have written tests from time to time. 
The question will be put forward to you and then the teacher will be looking at you as you are writing. When you are failing, he will be looking at you, failing very well. And those passing, he will nod his head, this is my student. This is my pupil. Amen. And at the day of reckoning, when it's time for marking, then you will know how good you are academically. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Adam was eating the fruit, God was looking at him. When the serpent started luring Eve, God was equally looking at him, at her. But then, at the end of the day, the result was that they disappointed God. They disappointed themselves. And the result of that disappointment and failure to adhere to the instruction of God was death and suffering. So that today, you and I dying on account of the sin that we inherited from our forebears, our first parents, is because they disobey. But we have an opportunity now to right the wrongs because Jesus Christ is here. The first Adam disobeyed. The second Adam obeyed. Jesus Christ as God came to the earth for a purpose, for a big purpose for us to be regained back to God, to our rightful positions. And what do we need to do in order to be attached to God again? I am sorry. Where are you? God created heaven and earth and everything therein and placed man in the garden of Eden just as he has placed you in your various families. This position that God has situated you is not where you should be falling. If that you are not promoted is not the mind of God. That you are not succeeding is not the mind of God. That people are oppressing you is not the mind of God. The will of God for you is for a better future. It's for prosperity. And if you are not prosperous, it means something is wrong. What is it that is wrong? What is it that is making you not to be prosperous? Why is it that you are not where you are supposed to be? If you were supposed to be prosperous and you are not, why is that so? This is the journey we have embarked upon beginning from today. A journey of introspection. A journey of looking into ourselves and see where we have gone wrong. Amen. That we are where we are today may be because we have failed to do what we are expected to do. Sometimes you have offended somebody that you need to go back to the person and make amends with the person. Solomon at a point in time when he was carried away by the wisdom that God has bestowed on him, he chose to deviate and started serving other gods. But God said something. God said, for the sake of my servant David, your father, I will not take away the throne from you. It follows therefore that some of the sufferings we encounter today could be as a result of what our parents have done that has not been atoned for. In this period of nine days, the church enjoins us to look deep into ourselves. There are some parents who have refused to tell their children the truth. You know the truth. You know the reason for the suffering of your family members. You know the reason why your children are suffering. You know what you have done at your tender age. You know why there is suffering in your family. You know why there is disunity in your family and you have failed to say the truth. Within this period, there is need for us to go back to the drawing board and see where we have wronged ourselves and correct the mistakes. Amen. The only way out is repentance. The only way out is what? Repentance. Adam was judged because he failed to repent. He refused to say, I am sorry. Instead, he started bringing up flimsy excuses, thinking that he has eaten the fruit that will make him to be wise. He is wise. A wrong and porous logic. He started melting before God, the creator of the universe, the wisdom by excellence. In the, the, in the letter, of, the first letter of St. Paul, to the Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25, the word of God says, what seems to be the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man. 
So that even when Adam was thinking he can, he can trick God, I, I was hiding because I'm naked. When you ask, where are you? Even today, God is asking you, ask your neighbor, where are you? Where are you? Tell yourself the truth. Where are you? If you are not where you are supposed to be, this message is very important as we journey for these nine days. When we are able to tell ourselves the truth, we will know where we are. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry. Of our sins 
that we have sinned against God and humanity. We have offended our family members. We have offended our neighbors. We have sinned against them. Anything we do to the least of our neighbors, that Jesus says we are doing unto him. We have offended God. Are we still strong-hearted to say like Adam, I am naked? Are you naked? Are you hiding from God? If God should open up what you do in the secrets, will you be able to stand it? Are you mad like Adam that was naked when he was supposed to be clothed? Are you mad like Adam that left the place that God has positioned him and chose to be where he was not supposed to be? Amen. In the presence of God, God gives us even more than we are expected to have. God is so generous as to give us everything that we need in life. But because of our curiosity to amass him, even more than we desire, God is looking at us and he expects us to come back. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, the word of God says, Come, let us do what? Reason together. Even if your sin is as dark as scarlet, I will wash it and you shall be as white as what? Snow. There is no sin that cannot be forgiven by God. There are many, even here, that are communicants, but they can't remember the last time they approached the confessional. Amen. Am I lying? No, Father. For years we are living with sin. We are comfortable in sin. We don't see sin as sin any longer. We are committing sin at reckless abandon because God is merciful. God wants us to come back if we are like Adam hiding. Come back from wherever you are hiding. Amen. Some persons are no longer seeing God as God. They are beginning to see God where there is no God. We have left what we should worship, the God that we should worship, and we are bind down to humanity. We are bind down to idols. We are bind down to money. We are bind down to human beings. We are bind down to something that is created by us instead of God. Where are you? Those things that you go at the secrecy of your time to worship and to liberate before, that thing is not God. God enjoins us to worship him in the open. At midnight you wake up when your wife or your husband is sleeping and you think God is not seeing you. God saw Adam but he called him and he expected him to say I am sorry. I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry are you sorry? I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, I am sorry, Lord. Are you sorry? I am sorry, Lord. Jesus, I am sorry, Lord. If you are not where God wants you to be, at this moment, we need to make a U turn. For the kingdom of God to be experienced in our lives, we must repent. For the kingdom of God to radiate in our families, we must take a U-turn. We must remember our commitments, the promises we made at moments of our baptism. We have decided to reject Satan and every evil inclination and to serve God. But today we have forgotten that promise and we are no longer following God. We are living in a life of secrecy, thinking that God is not seeing us. God is aware of where you are. We need to tell ourselves the truth. Are we relating with our neighbors like they are human beings? How are you seeing your wives as a husband? Because you have paid the bride price, you think you have bought your wife. And the wife is like a thing to you. That you can push forward and backward. 
you no longer treat your wife as a human being. Where is the love that existed between you? At that moment, when you called the people to gather at the sanctuary and you exchanged your conscience, you wedded each other, and God was the witness. God was the chief person that wears you. Today, you no longer see anything good in each other. The responsibilities that are attached to your commitment as a husband and a wife, your children, how do you treat them? How do you lead them? What example do you give to them? I know of families that the husband will go his way, the wife will go her way, and the children will be separating themselves to different places. Because of what? The wife and the husband are no longer taking responsibilities. No sign, no example to give to the children that God has entrusted to you. And then you cannot advise them because you are the chief sinner. Amen. Can you lead people aright again? Can you call your children together and your wife and see where you have erred? See where you are, you've gone wrong. Make amends with yourself that the kingdom of God may be felt even in our time. Where are you? God wants us back. Jesus Christ came down for your sake. He wants you to come back to him. No matter where you are, no matter what commitment, what covenant you have entered into, there is no covenant that is not of God that God cannot break because he wants you back. At this moment, the call for reconciliation is very important. At this moment, the call for repentance is very important. At this moment, as a diocese, we cry to God, asking for the atonement or the sinfulness of the people of this diocese. For us to come back to God, we must say, I am sorry. Our song then should be Psalm 51. Amen. Psalm 51. David sinned against God. And in his sinfulness, he acknowledged that he has erred. And Psalm 51 was his song. Are we like Adam that we say it is Eve that make me to sin? And the Eve we say is the serpent. Who are you accusing for the wrong that you have done? Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. That should be our talk. That should be our expression to God, to whom we have offended. God, whom we have offended in humanity. God, who we have offended in our wives. God, whom we have offended in our husbands. God, whom we have offended in our friends. Anything good or bad we do to people around, we are doing to God. So we need to, like David, take Psalm 51 at this moment for us to experience the kingdom of God. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, if God should judge you, I don't think anyone will be saved. But in his mercy we are redeemed. Let us therefore come back to him in sincerity of heart, acknowledging where we have gone wrong, and then we come back to him. Can we see Psalm, 6, Psalm 51? Please look up to the projector. Let us stand. Amen. Psalm 51. We read it slowly and from your heart. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins. Wash away all my evil and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you and done what is considered evil. You are right in judging me. You are justified in condemning me. I have been evil from the day I was born. 
From the time I was conceived, I have been sinful. Sincerity and truth are what you require. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Remove my sin and I will be clean. Wash me, I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. And though you have crushed me and broken me, I will be happy once again. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe out all my evil. Great pure heart in me, O God, and put a new loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach sinners your commands and they will turn back to you. Spare my life, O God, and save me, and I will gladly proclaim your righteousness. Help me to speak, Lord, and I will praise you. Do not, not sacrifice, and I will offer them. You are not pleased with bond offerings. My sacrifice is a humble spirit, O God. You will not reject a humble and repentant heart. O oh God, be kind to Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with proper sacrifices and with our burnt offerings. And bulls will be sacrificed on your altar. Amen. Raise your hands and stretch your hand unto Jesus. Beloved friends in Christ, God wants us back. God wants you back. In Exodus chapter 3, when the people of Israel were suffering in the land of captivity, God knew about it. And he sent Moses, that I am aware of the suffering of my people. God is aware of your suffering on account of disobedience. When we disobey God, when we choose to live like we are on our own, when we choose other things rather than God for the source of our existence, God looks at us. And when suffering comes, he watches us even when we suffer. At this moment, we need to come back to God. I do not know where you are. The question is addressed to you. Where are you, son of man? Where are you, daughter of God? Where are you, child of God? God wants you back. He wanted Adam back. And that is why he asked the question, Are you completely free of sin? Is there any sin that you see to be what you cannot do without? At this moment, we need to put it out to God. He said we should come to him. All of us that are labor and overladen, and he will give us rest. We have sinned against heaven and earth. We have sinned against humanity. We have offended God so much. We have made forgiveness very difficult. I do not know what gravity of sin you have committed to God. But at this moment, God wants you back. Sorry is what we need to say to God from our hearts. We need to be deeply sorry. For whatever we have done. As a diocese, we need to say sorry. As a community of believers, we need to say sorry. As individuals, we need to say sorry. When God forgives us our sins, there is promise attached to it. He says, when you pray, I will hear from heaven and I will restore you. There is a rightful place that God has positioned you. Adam left the garden of fruitfulness. Adam left the garden of joy. Adam left the garden of happiness and chose to be sorrowful and chose to be suffering. And that is the suffering that was mounted upon him. Today, I don't know whether you have left the garden of fruitfulness. Are you fruitful? Are you progressing? Are you succeeding in what you are doing? Your prayers are they answered? God says, if we repent of our evil ways, when we call on him, he will hear our prayer and heal our land. 
He will make our land fertile again. He will make our business prosperous again. He will make our careers useful again. God is ready to welcome us and to restore us. Beloved friends in Christ, let us ask God to forgive us our sins. Cast me not away from your presence, oh, oh God. Let not your Holy Spirit from me oh. restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew your spirit within me. Cast me not away, Lord. Cast, Cast me not away, away from your, from your presence, presence, O Lord. From your presence, O Lord. Take Lord. not your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit from, from me. me. Restore unto me the joy 